This is a phone that I have been excited to test out. Yes, it's the Vivo X90 Pro Plus in this gorgeous red colorway that I have with me in my hands right now. But unfortunately, I have it only for half a day and I can't really even test the cameras. That's not enough time to do it, which is exactly what I want to test on this. The beast of a camera setup. We'll do that when the phone launches in India. But in the meantime, what this phone also has is top of the line specs. You get Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, you get LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage and this is the 12GB 500GB variant of the phone. So let's do one thing, let's test out the benchmarks, let's test out how Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has been tuned in this Chinese variant of the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. If you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad, you're watching Tracking Tech English, let's go. I compared the 8 Gen 2 inside the X90 Pro Plus to the 8 Plus Gen 1 inside the OnePlus 10T. This is the only other 8 Plus Gen 1 phone that I have with me right now. But for some odd reason, this 10T was behaving really weird. I got scores that were similar to that of a phone with Snapdragon 870. So please don't take the comparison scores of these two phones for consideration. I also do have scores from previous uh, 8 Plus Gen 1 phones like the ROG Phone 6 Pro and the iQOO 90. I'll show charts and that will be reference for you to figure out how much more powerful the 8 Gen 2 actually is in real life. But again, this is the Chinese variant. It could be different in the Indian variant when it launches. All right, so we'll start off with something that really, really took me by surprise. And that is the storage read write scores. So like I said, the X90 Pro Plus has UFS 4.0 storage, and it is extremely, extremely fast at read write speeds. The read speed is almost 1.5 times better than the ROG Phone 6 Pro, and theoretically even faster is possible. And the write speed on the X90 Pro Plus with UFS 4.0 is almost double. So one direct benefit of fast storage read write speeds is that when you're shooting pictures, it takes very little time for readout from the storage itself and you can immediately capture pictures using even a big one inch sensor that is there inside the X90 Pro Plus. Now before we move on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. Moving on to Antidote score, we got a score of 1.27 million and the best the ROG Phone 6 Pro could manage was 1.1 million. Of course, it's at least around 15% faster in its current state, but I think that the Agent 2 can bench even higher. I think that the Android 2 scores will breach the 1.3 million mark. This one is not tuned for performance per se. It's supposed to be a balanced phone, which is meant specifically for camera performance. Now jumping on to Geekbench. In Geekbench, we got a single core score, which is of course higher than any uh, you know phone that we've tested before, including any phone with 8 plus Gen 1. But the major gains that you can see is in the multi-core scores. Now we got a score of 4700 plus and that is way higher than what we've managed from any, uh, you know, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 phone or a Dimensity 9000 phone, which also benches very high in multi-score Geekbench scores. Now moving on to a test, which will give us an idea of how the phone will perform in real life. And we ran 3D Mark while life stress test with the boost mode on, on the X90 Pro Plus. So what we got is a stability score of 82.2%, but that's also because we were using it in boost mode and pushing for performance. Performance. Vivo's boost mode is very, very aggressive. And with that, we also noticed that the temperature reached, you know, 50 degree plus, which is very, very high. And apart from that, it also lost 20% battery. In comparison, I feel that the ROG Phone 6 Pro, because it has a better cooling system inside and a lot of other extras, it does perform better. And even the iQOO 90 does perform better. And I'm talking about running the same benchmark with some sort of boost mode or performance mode active on both those phones as well, the ROG Phone 6 Pro and the iQOO 90. But you know what? You can run the phone in balanced mode and it's still pretty powerful. It's still great for today's games. And that brings me to the gaming section. And that's where we tested out what is the maximum graphics that is possible on games like Apex Legends and Call of Duty Mobile. On Apex Legends, you can do original graphics, of course. And of course, you can also play at Extreme HD and Ultra, which is 60 FPS. Unfortunately, only the iPhone offers 80 FPS right now, more than 60 FPS. Android phones don't have that option yet. On Call of Duty, you can achieve ultra frame rates or 120 FPS at low graphics, of course. Or you can achieve very high graphics and max frame rates. So yeah, Call of Duty gameplay is great on this phone. In my testing, I expected way better, especially when it came to, you know, the stress test that I run with 3 Mark every single time. But the X90 Pro Plus is 
currently the Chinese variant of the phone and it could change. And I'm also expecting it to be better when it launches in India. So this was like a preliminary quick, uh, you know, benchmark test run that I did on the X90 Pro Plus. I really wanted to test out the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2's performance. What did you guys think of the performance? Did you like it? Are you excited for Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones? Let me know in the comment section below. For more such cool videos, also don't forget to subscribe to Track and Take English. Until the next one, keep tracking and stay safe. Thank you.